What's up guys, this is Rajo here and today's video I'm very excited to introduce my new Sinnen light guns with the recoil. That's right, with the recoil. I know I had to wait about a year and a half after the Kickstarter. Um, this I originally ordered with the non-recoil and mid uh, Kickstarter I decided to upgrade it to, the kick, to um, recoil and it took that much longer for me to get it. I just got it today. Today is February 16th and I am excited because I love light gun games and I'm going to be playing this on my arcade cabinets and on the my gaming PC on my big 55 inch TV which I'm going to show later on in the video. First I'm going to do an unboxing, show you the gun and what it came with. I also ordered holsters with each gun. I got two guns uh, for player one and player two and this is really cool so um i'm excited so let's get into it so first off the top box as you see it says send in usb computer games camera based controller with optional recoil effect solenoid uh, i'm also recording this with my new gopro hero 8 black camera on attached to my hat adapter so I'm gonna get two views so hopefully this comes out good um, so hopefully everybody will enjoy this the two views uh, so like right here this first one is play two it's a red gun comes with a holster the recoil effect solenoid orange tip quality control check so let's open it up and let's see what we have Nice foam padding. We have, yes, 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 yes. Got the gun right here. This is nice. This has a nice weight to it and it has a USB type A adapter on one end. And you see you have here, uh, let's see, you have two buttons here. You have a thumbstick right there. Focus. It says send in light gun right here. Same thing on this side and two buttons on this side. And it has a good weight to it. And it's supposed to have a real long cable. Let's see how long that is. Um, and then you can see right on the tip there, there is the camera. And this is for the recoil. Nice. And also, this back in the box, came with a holster which I will attach to the arcade cabinet. Um, not to the current one that I have my three quarter scale, because I, like I said in the last video of my Hero 8 black unboxing, I'm gonna give that to my brother, and I'm planning on getting a 32 inch full size arcade cabinet from hopefully from monsterarcade.com. So it would just attach to the side of the cabinet, like so. And then the gun would just recede it, rest like that. So I'm not going to use this right now. But this is nice. Put that to the side. And we'll go on to the next box. And this is the Player One gun. It's blue. Comes with a holster. Recoil effect solenoid. Uh, orange tip. Quality control pass check. This has camera ID B and on the red gun it has camera ID C. So I have to download the software from the Cinder website. So I check out what that is. I'm not familiar with things, but I'll find out. And let's get to this beauty. All right. And this is a blue gun, as you can see. Similar to the other one. Two buttons here, the thumb pad there, the orange tip, the camera right there, send in light gun on this side, and two other buttons there. And this also has the recoil effect, pump action, so it's cool. Can't wait to set this all up. And again, another holster. Uh, one thing I did notice, uh, okay, let's see, a couple scratches on two buttons here and I believe I noticed on the orange gun not a deal breaker nothing uh, too terrible 
uh, some scratches on two of these buttons here. I don't know if it looks like scratches. But all in all, the quality of the gun seems very sturdy, very nice. Similar to uh, the aim track guns, which I will get in one second to show. So like I was saying, this is similar to like an aim track gun. Right here. This is a project I was working on, which I hadn't finished. Uh, I took apart uh, Guncom 2, PlayStation original one, and gutted it and put the aim track camera and stuff inside of it with the recoil, ordered solenoids, and it came with a cable like this. And I just didn't order the power adapter for it. but. I'm excited about this because I don't need to have a light bar or anything like that. But you can see comparison to the size of like an aim track. Seems a little bigger. But uh definitely has a nice weight in your hand. Very cool. Very, very, very cool. I'm excited. So let's move on to the PC. I'm gonna capture my screen with my Elgato and we'll step by step go through setting up the software and calibrating the guns and then on to some gameplay all right now we're on to the pc and i'm going to show you a walkthrough of uh setting up the software for the send and light gun um i was messing around with this for the past two days as you can see here i have two icons for gun one and gun two the blue and the red and two folders and let me just go through and I'll explain the rest in a second all right so now we're on to the send in like on website and we're gonna go to driver software and this is just to purchase it and what have you. So we go to driver software. And the latest version is 1.05B. So we click that. It'll download, as you see here, a file. And we'll go into the folder. And as you can see, I have a couple days ago I downloaded the software but I'm just gonna show you now that I have a better understanding of this uh, it's gonna come in a zip file so you know right mouse click and you'll extract the software and you'll get a folder like this my suggestion is to copy the folder to your desktop but let's just look at the contents of it so you'll have here and you'll have Windows software and also Linux. Most people are going to be using Windows software, so you'll click this folder. And you're going to have a couple categories here. This is just a README file here. It's good to read this to give you some helpful tips on stuff. Uh, let's close that down. The main thing you want to want right now is this folder where it says Send and Light Gun. And this is the executable for the software for calibrating and all fine tuning of the gun. So this, I made a shortcut to my desktop and just renamed it Light Gun 1, Light Gun 2, which you see here. And what I didn't realize, and that was some of the problems having the two guns, I was having a lot of errors. What I found on the forum and also on I think Andy uh, Johnson's uh, YouTube video regarding this that you need to have two separate instances of the software the light gun software running you can't just run one for two guns so what I mean by that is 
go back to my downloads. So I had to download the software two separate times and extract them separately. And then inside of each folder or file that I extracted, you're going to have to create a shortcut for each individual file that you've uh, extracted. And in suggestion, name it like on one, like on two, or whatever you want to name it. And I found on the um, Discord for sending like gun uh, images for the guns, which was pretty cool. I found that on a YouTube video of somebody's, and suggested to go to to join the Discord definitely for the sending like gun group and a lot of valuable information. So it helped me a lot. Um. So let's just run the software. Just I'm going to just walk through one of the guns and it's going to be the same procedure for the second. Just click the software loads up as you see here. And in, when you first first time running the software, this is not going to be clicked. So you make sure you agree to the licensing terms and conditions. You click that and you go to here. Next tab, select gun. And as you can see here, this is where the problem was because I was trying to configure using just one instance of the program to control both guns. And what I later learned, you have to do two separate, like I said before. So then you will check and I'm going to be working on the blue gun. As you saw, I have the blue and the red gun. So and it tells you the com ports. So you just select the gun. So like if you usually when you first start, it's going to be this clear. So you select whichever gun you're going to calibrate and configure. So right now it's going to be blue gun. Click that. If you want to see which firmware, mine already has the latest update. When it came, it already had this 1.5. But you would click here just to see what version. And you see here firmware version 1.5. And it already has my calibration settings and what have you. And it tells you which camera also. It's the blue gun color. Camera name is Sendin Camera B. And that's the COM port, COM4. Now, if it was a later version, an early version, I should say, you would just click update. And then I'm only going to do that because it's going to reset all my uh, things to uh, default and I have to go configure it again. But I'm just going to walk through what you do. You click that to update the firmware and then you would save it. So we're just going to be working on this gun. Next. Okay, now if I'm on this screen, what we're going to do, you see the various uh, categories uh, that you can uh, change settings on. Right here, you see this is the X percent adjustment, the Y percent adjustment, and this is going to go from uh, the alignment uh, screen where you can fine tune the gun's uh, sights. So, first of all, you're going to start the software. For the gun and again we're working on the blue gun and it'll be the same procedure for the red so I'm only gonna do this once as you can see here now I have the gun pointing at my TV screen and the cursors jumping around going crazy but let me just move it a little not pointing directly at it so I can control the mouse so, okay so this is pointing at my laptop right now so you have on the left hand side here oh, this window uh, okay let's point at the keyboard so it's a little easier so right here this is what the raw footage what the camera is seeing on the right hand screen right here this is what the camera is interpreting from the software when you're playing All the calculations are being done, and you'll see on the screen here. This is well, let me pull that back. Okay, this is better. Well, you can see it's a solid uh, blue screen, and that is my TV screen right there. So, on the left, you see what actually the camera is seeing, and the processed image is the blue. You should have a solid blue screen now. If I move the gun closer to my TV screen, you see it gets all broken up, and the image gets screwed up and the cursor is jumping around that shows that you're too close to the screen so I'm moving further back I'm about 
I would say six or seven feet away from my TV screen, and now it's the cursor's not moving as much. It's more manageable, and I'm moving the gun left to right, up and down, and you can see it moving on that screen. This is what it's seeing. This is what it's uh, processing through the software. Now. I will change the borders by hitting the right rear button and this, you notice the cursor is not jumping around as much. It's more fine-tuned the smaller the window and this is 4 by 3 that it's even more uh, precise. Right now I'm taking the the border off. It's still you know manageable. This is the thin border around TV screen and this is 4 by 3 and you notice okay but of course what I'm showing you the screen is uh, chopped off so I'm gonna put just the small the thin board around the whole 16 by 9 image on the TV screen so let me try to show you so here it's gonna say recalibration from the light gun on start that's that was already checked I didn't do anything with that these all were checked already so I didn't mess with that right here you can have camera controls you really shouldn't have to mess with that um, this kind of corresponds to these defaults back down here where this is for the border and depending on what type of uh, TV screen you're using uh, or monitor and the brightness of the monitor I had to put my one of the problems that I realized what I had to fix was on my TV I had to put it to dynamic mode and crank up the brightness on my TV for it to display properly like this because when it was the regular if it's in uh, regular or natural or movie mode this is all screwed up so you definitely have to have your screen really bright or you can uh, try to change some of these settings here so you'll notice here brightness is a hundred so now if I have dim display it says increase brightness and contrast on the camera to help pick up dimmer displays made the border slightly thicker than default and then you'll notice uh, let me take off the border here. Brightness is at 120 from when it was normal was 100. So I'll put this back to what I like to have a thin border with no outer. And that value went back to 100. And these settings chain, you can go in directly and manipulate it as you see fit to get better performance out of your gun and the TV screen that you're using or monitor. Okay, so that's that. Uh, also, one thing to note, I think when I first started the software initially, this sleep mode enabled was... Oops, get back that? Okay. The sleep mode enabled, this was, uh, I guess, you could set it to go to sleep. I unchecked all of that. I didn't want the gun going to sleep if I'm, you know, in between games or resting for a minute or so, or, you know, a couple minutes or whatever. So, uncheck that. Uh, this was already pre-checked, so I didn't mess with that. Uh, one thing you can, if you want, it can auto start the send and light gun on load. You can have that checked. I normally had that checked, but I unchecked it just for this uh, tutorial demonstration so I can get to this uh, screen. Because when you just start up, you click the icon that's on the desktop right here or here, you won't even see this. So then you have to go into setting, you know, to bring it up. So that's this screen. Oh, also, and it tells you which camera. So, uh, wait. it says choose camera, and this is B, and the C is for the red gun. And once you're comfortable with whatever you have, if you set it to, you know, blue border or anything down here, then you just save your settings there. You can burn these settings to the light gun. So once you start the software, it's always going to have these values. Um, and this for the this part is for the camera and this is for the calibration of the sights on the gun you can burn that or if you want to read it from whatever it already has in the gun you can take it from that this right here I saw in a video when Andy um, sent and demonstrated gangster mode that's if you holding your gun like you see in the movie sideways to shoot which I don't do that but it's already set to auto so it'll still work if you're doing that mode uh, next tab we have border and when you first set up the software this enable outer border was checked so I 
just unchecked it because let's see it'll give you two borders and you see how the screen is cut off it'll cut, make it even smaller when you have the borders you know if you have multiple the outer and inner border enabled so I didn't mess around with that this setting here you can manually change and this is the thickness of uh, the height the width of the uh, the border so if I make this let's see is 0.5 so if I change that to like say 3 and then I'll show the border it'll make it even thicker so you see here how big this border is yeah so I usually either have a 1 I think 1 is good let's save that Okay, now I've changed the setting to one and then I'll show you how the border looks. So now as you can see here, the cursor is a very thin border. So this is a, the size of a uh, border I like to use. Uh, it doesn't cut off too much of the gameplay real estate. Because uh, when you have the thicker borders, it might be more accurate, but you're going to lose uh, some of your screen, gameplay screen on there. So that's that and down here and mess with any of that I guess I have this check cycle of four by three border so that's when you click a button it goes to large and then the four by three if you wanted to just have draw a border only around four by three area you could do that I haven't messed with that so I'm not gonna go into that next is the alignment and it goes according to like we saw the X adjust percentage and the Y adjust percentage you'll have that here that corresponds to this so like it says it says you can now calibrate by holding the d-pad left for three seconds and shooting the mouse cursor when it moves to the center and the pump action cancels it and you have to have the latest firmware which I do so what will happen is I'm holding down the left on the d-pad three seconds now you see the cursor so I'm just going to illustrate this. Now, I'm not moving the gun. I'm using the uh, mouse right here. So these numbers for the x-axis, this changes at a large increment, and fine-tuning this is a small change. So like if I was is 1.6, negative 1.6, if I click that, 1.65, 1.7. So I'll go back to 1.65. I mean 1.6. And then if I hit the large triangle, it jumped to minus 2.1 so that's a big jump so I'll get back to 1.6 and this is what I have it calibrated at so let me just hold down the d-pad so it comes back again All right, so now I put the border on so I just press the trigger on the gun and as you can see now I the cursor is moving and this is me holding uh, moving the gun around so it is way off center right now and you can see your numbers here minus 10.746 so so I guess I could reset let's see, reset it to zero so that is almost on target and right now I'm pointing at the middle of this space with the gun and it's a little high so I'm gonna just press here you can see changes a little and that is a little to the left and that is just about right uh, it's a little off That's just about right. So then I'll save this. Okay. And that's how you do the sight alignment and adjustment for that. And the next tab is cursor offset. And this has to do with your size of your TV screen or your monitor. So the only thing I changed with this, uh, just make sure this is checked. I think it is when you first boot up the software. And it's in uh, for your part of the world or country. And I'm in the United States, so it's inches. 
and what and I have a 55 inch TV screen so I just inputted that and it will automatically set the site offset that's pretty much and then just save it so that's all that I messed around with I'm sure this might be a more in-depth tutorial on the website I haven't seen it yet but I don't know what you know I haven't seen to change anything more than just adjust this so that's that cursor offset tab the next one is the button assignment tab and this was already set up for me uh, and it just manipulates the trigger will be your left mouse click pump action is the right mouse, right mouse click the only thing two things I changed was I forgot what this was oh I guess it was mouse right and mouse middle I changed this because I saw on a tutorial I think it was from Andy Johnson I'll leave a link uh, in the description for that video I uh, believe he suggests to put this to return which I guess would be like your enter key on your keyboard and for the right the rear left would be for space and these are the buttons on the side of the uh, both sides of the gun and of course this one is the right rear which turns on and off the border and this is when you're pointing the gun this side here normal is when you're pointing the gun at the screen and then this is with the d-pad left right up and down so it's mandatory now on this side is the off screen so if you're going and also this is important this is the front right so most arcade games you hit on the keyboard the five uh, number five key that is to put the coin in and you hit the one key to start the game so off if you're pointing a gun off screen and you hit the front right button it's going to insert a coin so you don't need to use the keyboard or if you have arcade cabinet press any buttons on your arcade if you do everything right from the gun you would just off screen press your point the gun off screen press the front right button put in a coin then point the gun back at the screen and you would either depending on the game you can use your trigger or press the front right button to start the game and that's pretty much it for that and if it's a special game I guess you can change these settings to your needs next and last tab is the recoil when you first boot up the software for the first time this is going to be unchecked so you have to make sure you check that and then the enable recoil is not going to be checked so you have to make sure you check that and then it says please make please ensure that any loud recoil noises are kept a safe distance away from your ears or anyone else's ears especially children you gotta have click OK alright these tabs were already checked trigger recoil pump action recoil on event and pump action recoil off event so that I didn't mess around with the only thing I changed a little was the strength of the pulse and this button you'll test it and you can probably hear it and that's me pressing the button and it just triggers the recoil on the gun if you want to do a repeated uh, test on it stop it and that's a single shot as you can see there and if I did the automatic default and these settings change depending it's just like with the border the different defaults the settings the presets so so automatic default and if I mm -hmm. test it I I you stop it and then uh, if I do mixed I think certain games, probably like Jurassic Park or something, I would need to change. So right now I have just set for single shot. And then strength is all the way up, so I think I'll have it in the middle. And then whatever you do, you, you save it. And, and this part here I didn't mess with, but I guess if you wanted to have it automatic, you could do that. just keep it on normal and I'll save that and the next tab is just about the software or whatever and that's it so then you can close this down and then and you can see you manipulate and I have a nice thin border around the screen and that's it on full screen and that's it at 4 by 3 so let's get into some gameplay I know this was long and boring the software but it's important first time I had to do this a couple times when I first you know got the gun I didn't know, know certain things so I had to look up on the forum 
and got some helpful tips. Also, like I said, make sure your screen brightness is very bright or it's, this is not gonna work right and accurate and you're gonna think it's something wrong with your gun, which is most nines out of 10. Uh, if you have the software set up properly, it's your screen uh, brightness that's gonna throw off the gun and everything. So let's get into some gameplay, some fun stuff.
a kid at a little convenience store. And this had a, a rifle. Let me still and again, you can see the crosshairs are moving with the gun.
Captain Badass.
purchase. If you found some enjoyment and useful information from this video, smash that like button. If you haven't already subscribed to the channel, consider subscribing. Hit that bell notification so you know when I have a little video. I'm gonna do a lot more videos with this battle right here and the other one. Done. Share the video, leave a comment down below. Like I said, I'm going to leave links to these other two uh, YouTubers, Andrew Johnson in England, who uh, has done some uh, awesome tutorial videos. He also showed how I set up with the main, what to do to get main working with the light gun. And I can't remember the YouTuber's name, but I'll leave his channel in the description below. He has a lot of in-depth useful information about setting the light, sending light guns up with various other emulators. So, share this video, leave a comment down below. Thanks for watching, and I will see everyone in the next video. Peace.